Confused about which grenades you should use? Or maybe which situations you should use grenades in? Don't worry, I've got you covered. Thanks to Luis Rodriguez for the request. If you have something you want covered, drop it in the comments. Let's start with some basics that apply to all throwables. They all have an animation that leaves you unable to shoot back. Here, the enemy I'm grenading re peeks me, but I use the wall as cover to avoid getting shot after the throw. Where a grenade will travel to will depend on the angle that you release it. In this diagram, 0 degrees is level with your sight, so you'd be looking straight forward. You want to throw your grenade at a 45 degree angle for the furthest possible distance. If you throw a grenade when looking straight ahead, it would fall like this. The more you tilt your camera up, the further it will land until the 45 degree point. If you keep adding degrees to the angle you throw it, it will keep getting higher and higher but it will also fall shorter as well. This is useful for throwing grenades onto roofs or behind cover. And if you threw it at 90 degrees, it would go straight up and back down on top of you. The frag grenade has a 5 second delay before exploding. You may think this is unideal as people can just run away. However, because you don't need line of sight to use them, they can be used to force enemies out of cover or into corners such as this example. In this clip, none of these frags actually hit me, but they do restrict where I can move which results in me being in a poor position. The first one forces me to go right, and the others pin me in place with no escape routes. Okay. Here's an example of me using both frags that I have. The first one you've already seen. This has the effect of forcing the player out of cover, resulting in an easy kill. I cross the street and can hear somebody in the next room, so I'm using the second frag to help me enter. I intend to use the door frame to bounce it into the corner shown by the arrow, however the enemy peeks. Again, to avoid being shot when grenading, I widen the angle which results in the grenade dropping here. Because he pushed me, I'm able to shoot him in the back as he's running away from the grenade. Here there are enemies holding a flag ahead and I have to cross a wide open beach to get up close with my SMG. I use an entire mag just to kill one enemy, and I'm empty on ammo, however, I choose to be aggressive and push with no bullets loaded, using the frag grenade to keep high pressure on the entrance that I'm pushing. I use the terrain to help me close the distance safely and reload, and after the frag detonates I'm moving straight in to clean up. I get shot at from behind and run into this garage. The enemy drops a frag which is a great move because I'm now being forced to move out from the garage. This enemy chooses to peek straight after the grenade which is a valid move. My aim was already poor and I was focusing on the frag which gives him a kill. He could have also just held that angle and either let me die in the garage to the grenade or shot me when I was forced out. Lastly, if you want to practice grenades, you get infinite grenades in the test range. You can get a feel for how far the angle of release lands the grenades, the effect of jumping, throwing them onto roofs and throwing them onto windows or other cover. You can also practice bouncing them off obstacles such as doors to enter rooms with. Impact grenades deal less damage and have less kill radius than frags, but they instantly detonate on contact. This means they're less about displacing and are solely a means of indirect killing. The opponent doesn't get as much time to move out of the way. You can't bounce them off of walls or door frames, which gives them less flexibility than frags. Impacts are good for weapons with small magazines or high reload time as ways to finish fights without reloading, such as this example. In summary, impacts give you higher kill pressure but less displacement pressure than frags. Both are equally viable. Flashbangs do almost no damage but instead blind anyone looking its way upon detonation. The duration of this effect is unreliable, however. If it's right next to you, it lasts several seconds, but it wears off almost instantly past perhaps 10 meters and has zero effect past 20 meters. Flashbangs can also be avoided by quickly looking away when they detonate. For these reasons, I consider flashbangs unreliable. The only feedback you get is a hit marker 
but that does not tell you how long they're blind for. You will find yourself in situations where you flash a room, enter and get shot down because the flash only applied a small effect. Frag grenades offer a more reliable way to clear rooms as the opponent gets less counterplay. Smoke grenades deal no damage but block line of sight and they're very useful when used correctly. There's no difference between the four colours available, but using green smokes are the most meme worthy. Smokes are great for situations such as this. Let's say there are enemies on the street to the left and right of me. I can drop dank clouds on one half of the street, removing their ability to shoot me, allowing me to peek the other direction more safely. A key thing to understand about smokes is that you should smoke the enemy position, not your own. Here, I drop smokes to help my team enter this building. However, I place them at the entrance of the building we are going to use. You can see there are three enemies just waiting at the other side of the smoke, picking people off. On my next life, I instead throw smokes further to block enemy positions from firing at us as we advance. This gives my team a much better chance of getting inside this closest building, because these enemy held positions can no longer shoot us from behind their cover. The closest door remains unsmoked. Smokes are great, especially with close quarter weapons like SMGs, because it allows you to shorten the engagement distance by blocking more distant enemy cover, allowing you to engage in close range fighting. Flares have no effect during the day, However, they serve a purpose on night maps. They don't do any damage, but they do produce a lot of light. These are effective against night vision users. All night vision goggles see when looking through a flare is a white blur. This can be countered by disabling your night vision goggles. Flares are the opposite of smokes, in that flares want to be dropped near to you to conceal your position. Smokes want to be dropped away from you to block enemies' view of you. Overall, I don't think flares are too useful, as in most cases, people will just disable their night vision. So, I personally don't use these, even on night maps. The last grenade in the game is only available to the Engineer class. Anti-vehicle grenades deal less damage to infantry, but are able to damage vehicles. Frankly, the Engineer class already has an RPG and C4 for dealing with vehicles, so these grenades are fairly useless. I would not recommend using these, considering you could run frags or impacts for infantry, or smokes to help you sneak up to armour with the C4. I'll close by throwing together a quick tier list. Anything A or above are great meta grenade options. B tier are situational, and sorry D tier, but I would never consider running you in the current state. Thanks for watching. If you have a suggestion for future videos, let me know in the comments.